What's up you guys? Some huge news in the ammunition industry and that's not hyperbole. I would say the last two weeks have changed the landscape of the ammunition industry more than any other two weeks in recent history. There are four stories that I don't know why they aren't being covered more than they are because they will dramatically impact what it looks like to get ammunition in the United States. Those ones we're talking about at the end of the video. At the start of this video, we're going to talk about some fun stuff. Hornady announced a brand new cartridge yesterday. It's called 22 arc and it's very interesting especially for coyote hunters competition shooters and if you're an ar-15 owner if you're any one of those three 22 arc is very interesting they also announced a brand new bullet and a new line of ammunition that will cover many different cartridges like 6.5 creedmoor so let's dive in first looking at the 22 arc let's look right at the numbers 22 arc is shooting 62 88 grain bullets so you compare that to a 22 to 50, 22 to 50 is by far are the most popular cartridge among serious coyote hunters. 22-250 is just, man, it's always been there. And so it's compelling to see this coming into an AR-15 platform because coyotes, you know, having a semi-auto would be a pretty nice advantage. So you see it's shooting heavier bullets. The whole idea here is that it's shooting more aerodynamic, bigger, longer bullets, even, and they're shooting them fast, even though not quite as fast as 22250. So 22250 might shoot at 3680 feet per second. This is, you know, 3300 to 2950. But because these are more aerodynamic bullets, you'll see the wind drift. Dang, look at that. 14 inches of wind drift. If you're in a 15 mile per hour wind, so a very stiff wind, it's only going to drift 14 inches at 400 yards compared to your 22 to 50 would go 26 inches at that same distance. And so uh, you can just immediately see, oh, okay, this has a real advantage. So, you know, coyote hunting out to 300 yards in windy conditions, and you usually don't have time to range. Uh, you know, you can't be moving around. And so usually you're just guessing, ah, eh, whatever, 200 yards, and you need to just hold and shoot. Being very flat shooting, but also resistant to wind because you're shooting small target. A coyote looks big because of all that fur. It's just a little rat body in there. So you have to be very accurate. And then out to 600 yards, you'll see that the drop, the 22 arc starts to beat the 22250. Even though this was launched faster, these have higher BC or more aerodynamic bullets. And so it does become pretty compelling. The other thing that's interesting about the 22 arc is how low the recoil is. So 22250, seven foot pounds of energy. And 2250, the, the recoil is so light on that. But this is even lighter. You know, you're down to six foot pounds of energy. It doesn't even feel like a kick on your shoulder anymore. It just feels like, I don't know, the vibration on your Nintendo is like when you shoot, like it doesn't barely even bumps your scope at all. So you can see exactly what you're hitting. That's really cool. So that's 22 arc. If you own an AR-15, all you need is a barrel. You're going to have to have, you know, your barrel, your magazine and bolt face. That's it. A very, very simple change to take your AR-15 to shoot in 22 arc. Now I mentioned here the ELD VT and some of you said ELD, what ELD? I've never heard of this. So you probably know the ELD excellent. That's most common for hunting. That's the Hornady Precision Hunter. That's the bullet that I shoot more than anything else. You've probably also seen ELD Match. That's the white box of ammo from Hornady. This new VT bullet is a, they're usually light for caliber bullets. They're light, but they are using that aerodynamic shape. It's like the VMAX and, and Hornady Match had a baby, right? Let's see what that would look like. So we've already seen what it looks like in a 22 arc. Now let's see it in a 6.5 Creedmoor. So you're seeing it's a hundred grain bullet shooting at 3050. I'm making a couple assumptions on BC and velocity here, by the way, because they didn't release everything, but I think I'm going to be pretty close. The recoil is two pounds lower. That is significant. It just helps you to see through that scope. Plus, obviously, if you have uh, younger shooters, it's nice for that. The wind drift is not as good. The 143 is going to have a higher BC. Heavier bullets generally going to have a higher BC if all else is equal. But you'll see the drop is much less at 400, you know, three and a half inches, I mean, whatever, four inches at 600 yards. So is it a game changer for the 6.5 Creedmoor? No. But if you want to take your 6.5 Creedmoor and turn it into a coyote gun, perfect opportunity. I think it will also, the VT bullet will have definite application and match probably in the 22 caliber, etc. You're going to see this released in the new V match line of ammo. Okay. We've had our fun. Fun is over. Fun's done in this video. Now we need to talk about something way more important than what we just talked about. There are four stories 
that have completely changed the ammunition landscape. They were just a blip on most people's radar. It happened just very recently, the last one and two weeks. And I, I don't think we're talking about this nearly enough. In fact, most of you probably haven't seen these stories. I'm gonna use today's video sponsor, which is Ground News, to help highlight these stories. First, let's talk a little bit about Ground News, then we'll get into these stories as we do. So look at Ground News. This is so cool. Basically what they do is they go and collect news stories from lots of different organizations and they present it to you in a way that is very fair, that you know where you're getting your information from. I can go to the homepage and I see this major story right here that will impact what we're about to talk about. This is a new shooting, mass shooting in Maine, very unfortunate thing. When I click on this mass shooting in Maine, look, I can read from articles that are left-leaning, center, or right-leaning. I can look at the distribution bias of who's talking about this story, when they were updated, everything like like that. And then you can choose which type of resource you want to, to get. They don't do any fact checking, which is nice for me because I don't trust the fact checkers. The other feature I like, you can get either on the desktop or on your phone. They obviously have a cool app for ground news. So here's my homepage and I'm going to click right in the middle at the top on blind spot. What this does is, so I'm very conservative in my politics. What this does is it gives me my blind spot and it says, if you're right leaning, these are some news stories that the right leaning news news organizations are not talking about right now. And so I think, oh, I would like to know about that because I just like to be informed about both sides. I want to know exactly what's happening and then I can make decisions. So whether you're right or left, then you can just see what your blind spot is right now. What isn't being covered? Plus they have a really cool report that you can see where your news information has come from over the time that you've been reading it. A ground news subscription is not expensive and it will help you to understand what's going on in the world. Sign up with my link below so you can try ground news. That's ground.news slash backfire. Check it out. Okay, so I mentioned these four stories. I'm actually going to read to one of you from ground news here. The first is Vista Outdoor has sold their ammunition lines. Now, if you aren't familiar with Vista Outdoors, it is huge. Like a giant number of the outdoor brands that you follow, watch, use are from Vista Outdoor. So here's what happened. Federal, like all federal ammunition. That's huge. That's got to be, you know, for hunting ammo, maybe 30% of all hunting ammo is going to be from from federal then you have remington then you have cci that you know is very important if you're a reloader we've pretty much only get primers from federal and cci that's really all we see on shelves uh, plus other companies beer and more and i i said remington it's remington ammo and so all those combined that's a huge chunk of the u.s ammo supply whether you're a hunter defensive tactical competition shooter whatever that is a giant percentage of all ammunition in the united states that company was just sold for 1.9 billion dollars that chunk of vista outdoors and who did they sell it to <laughs> this is crazy you guys I, like you can't make this stuff up that all of our u.s ammunition that we need to defend ourselves that was was sold to the czechoslovak group so that is a group in Czechoslovakia. The owner of this of this company, or the CEO, I should say, of it, brags about owning more tanks than the Slovak and the Czechia military combined. And he's only 27 years old. I mean, imagine this kid. He's like, yes, give them 400 Sherman tanks. Also, please deliver my Lunchable before lunch. Like, he's a kid that has more tanks than two countries' armies. And now he's now overtaken a giant chunk of the whole U.S. ammo supply. So, those companies will keep manufacturing plants open in the United States, but they're owned by a foreign company. We can't let that happen. Like, hello, what are we talking about? That's, we need that in the United States and we cannot have something, a company that owns a giant chunk of our ammo supply being overseas. Why can't we allow that? Well, because look at the next story. The next story happened just a couple weeks ago, and that's the ATF is banning UTM from selling non-lethal ammo in the United States. Why would they want to stop non-lethal ammo sales? Because they're just trying to stop all imports. You saw the Russia stuff got banned, uh, you know, the tool ammo, all that kind of stuff. So that changed 
are coming after this one one by one. They're going to shut off all imports of ammo into the United States. That's the goal, obviously, right? We have two very concerning stories right next to each other. Then another story happened right there, which is there was an explosion at the Hornady plant, and uh, unfortunately, one person lost their life. Uh, Hornady is not the first explosion they've had there. Seven years ago, they had a major explosion. I could certainly see disruption, at least some, to the ammunition line that way. And then the one that was covered more is Lake City Ammunition, which is Winchester. So they do a ton for the government, uh, but they also sell in the U.S. market. In fact, reports are that about 30% of the U.S. market is coming from Lake City Winchester of the 223 ammo. And that just got cut off. Why? Probably because they're selling it overseas with World War III that, are, that our leaders have been starting. You see prices in 223 ammo have jumped over the last couple of weeks. Some reports by as much as 39% 223 ammo is going way up. I really hope that this doesn't initiate another couple years of panic buying and everything. But the way that this is moving with cutting off import, the US government no longer supplying to civilians, at least for who knows how long. And if this sale goes through of having all those ammo companies controlled by a country that I do not want in charge of our ammo supply, we could be in serious trouble. The Second Amendment could be in, in serious trouble if we can't feed our firearms. So what's the upshot of all this news? Well, it's for me, it's this. <sighs> So what's the upshot of all this? Well, for me, it's two things. I am not gonna go out and panic buy ammo. Tell you what I am doing as I find prices that are good and there are things that I will be using in the future, I'm going to store up. And what I'm going to store up is this powder and the primers that I just lost. Why did that open? Primers and powder, bullets we can find. They're made by many different US companies. There are usually options to find bullets. Brass we can generally find. May not be the brands we always want, but we can usually get brass. But primers and powder are the ones that are always disappear. And if you're a reloader, it doesn't become a big deal when there are huge ammo crunches. This can load 1,400 shots of 6.5 Creedmoor ammo. That's a ton for most people. Reloading for me is just not optional. If you're interested in getting into reloading, go do yourself a favor and get yourself a Backfire Plus subscription. I'm gonna save you so much money and time on learning how to do it. Or go learn it for free wherever else you find information. But whatever you do, learn how to reload. I really feel like that's the lesson from today. See you guys.